What is an estimated position and why do we do it? An estimated position is a position fix on a chart that also takes into account the potential effects of wind and tide to give a rough position of where we think we may have ended up having followed a known course. In effect, we go on a predetermined heading and we take a look at the effect of the wind and tide and where they may have pushed the vessel off of our intended course. Why do we do it when there's more accurate methods of navigation out there? For example, we could take a three point fix or something or look at a transit. This is a method of navigation to estimate your position while on a passage when you're out of sight of land. After using an estimated position to track your journey, once you come into sight of other identifiable features, you would use them as a more accurate method of determining where you are. In this video, we're going to take a look at this entry from the ship's log and plot the estimated position as if it was happening in real time. In this log, we can see that the journey was going from a place called Swanage to Yarmouth and at 5 to 2 in the afternoon, they slipped a mooring buoy in Swanage and an hour later, they entered an estimated position on the chart. And if we look here on the top right hand side of the log entry, we get the details of the journey. We can see that the wind was a force 3 coming from the west southwest. There's a barometer pressure showing steady pressure throughout the day, so fair weather. The speed of the vessel was 6 knots. The heading was 70 degrees. And you can see from the log readings on the side there, 13592 and 13598, they confirm that the vessel has travelled 6 nautical miles. Here is the chart for that navigational passage. And we can start with what we know by using the information from the log. Firstly, we can plot our initial fix, the position our journey started from. And the skipper was quite sure of this because he was tied to a mooring buoy in Swanage Bay. Then we can use the latitude scale on the side to mark off a distance of six nautical miles. And that will give us a water track position for an hour's worth of journey time following the 70 degree heading. As mentioned at the start of the video, a water track on its own isn't particularly accurate because it takes no account of what the wind and tide may have done to the vessel and the current of the sea or the tide will have moved the boat. When we first looked at the log entry for this journey, we saw that the wind was coming from the west southwest, which is pretty much dead behind the vessel. So there's no leeway to account for because we haven't had a strong wind on either the port or the starboard side of the vessel to push us off course. The only thing we really need to account for is the tide. So if we take a look at this symbol below our water track and zoom in a bit, we can see that it's a tidal diamond, tidal diamond H. Tidal diamond H refers to a table in which there are details of the set and drift of the current that's the speed and direction of the current that we can look up and use to plot what happened. Taking a look here at the top of the tidal diamond table, we can find tidal diamond H. More importantly, on top there, it says that all the detail in this table is based on high water at Portsmouth. We would refer to Portsmouth as the standard port. On this side of the table, we have the detail of what happens in the hours before high water at Portsmouth. And on this side of the table, we have the detail on what happens in the hours after high water at Portsmouth. So our next step is to find out what happened with the tide during the date and time of travel that we were undertaking this journey from Swanage to Yarmouth. Taking a look back at the log entry, we can see that the date of the journey was the 27th of November 2019. And the journey time was from 5 to 2 till 5 to 3 when the estimated position was entered on the chart. I don't know where in the world you're watching this video from, but Portsmouth is a harbour that's in the Solent, based in the United Kingdom. And the information on the tide tables for Portsmouth are in this book, Reed's Nautical Almanac. There are other sources of tide tables, but this is the one we're using for the purpose of this video. Here's the page in the almanac for Portsmouth tide tables showing the month of November. And if we zoom into that section and take a look at this date, the 27th, we can see that high water was at 11.24 and it was 4.9 metres. 
and that was going out, the low water was at 1655, dropping down to 0.7 metres. These are the two times that encapsulate our journey time that will happen between 5 to 2 and 5 to 3 in the afternoon. In order to use tidal diamond H, we then need to work out at what time, relevant to the high water of 1124, our journey time occurred, whether it's hours after or hours before high water, and which hour it is. So we know our journey time was 1355 to 1455. And we know that high water at the standard port of Portsmouth was 1124. With that information, we can fill out a tidal ladder and work out what hour relative to high water 1355 to 1455 is. First, we'll fill out a column showing the hours after high water because 1355 to 1455 occurs after 1124 in the morning. Then taking our time and making sure we're being accurate, we'll fill out another column that indicates the half hours in between those tidal hours. In doing this, we can see that five to two to five to three was high water plus three hours. And that gives us the information we need to refer back to our tidal diamond table and read off the information that we can then plot on the chart. And looking at the table, we can see that high water plus three, the direction of the tide was 232 degrees and the speed of the tide was two knots. We're using the spring speed instead of the neap speed because when we referred to the almanac, we could see that we were on a spring tide rather than a neap tide. The next thing to do then is get our navigational instruments, put in a bearing of 232 degrees, plot the tidal vector measuring two knots or two nautical miles. Once we've done this, the end of the tidal vector is where our estimated position of our vessel will be. So this is taking into account now our water track plus the fact that the tide was going out and was pushing us backwards and south of our intended position. Using the correct plotting symbols is important because it will stop anybody waking you up when you go off of your watch and somebody else takes over and it means that anybody else can have a look at the navigation plan and navigational records and understand what's happened. So an estimated position is plotted with a triangle at the end of the tidal vector. The water track has a single chevron or a single arrow placed over the line and a tidal vector has three chevrons or three arrowheads placed over the line. And finally, a fix on the chart is denoted as a circle with a dot in the middle. When doing an estimated position, one thing you need to be careful of is this. We call this a circle of uncertainty or an area of inaccuracy. Essentially, an estimated position is not the most accurate form of navigation. We're doing our best to think what the planet's weather systems, i.e. tide and wind, may have done to our vessel as we've plotted a course. And it's a best guess until we can do a better fix or a better triangulation of our position. So what we do is we allow this circle of uncertainty, which is a bit of a fudge factor, to say, OK, we think we're in this area here. And it's typically a 5 to 10 percent distance relevant to the journey overall distance. That's a walkthrough of how to do an estimated position. As always, we've created a free cheat sheet which is available on the website and there is a link in the description below the video that you can follow and go and read the in-depth article and go and download that cheat sheet for yourself. If you've enjoyed the video and found it useful, please let us know by commenting in the box below and liking the video and please also subscribe to our channel.